Hey there, glad to be back today to walk you through step-by-step -step how to create five essential reports that every business should have in their HubSpot dashboards. Hopefully this is just what you need to get you out of the woods if you're in a slump when it comes to your reporting and just overall CRM data health. So grab your coffee, let's open up your HubSpot dashboard and dive right in. So today I'm going to be walking you through five reports that we have saved in our data health dashboard. The first one I'm going to be covering is tracking your unengaged contacts over time. So this is directly from the marketing email definition of an unengaged contact in HubSpot. So it's actually where we're going to go to kind of help us build out this report. So here I've pulled up um, getting ready to send an email and you may be very familiar, you get this little checkbox that says don't send to unengaged contacts, and then it gives you that number of contacts that HubSpot has already identified as unengaged. So we're simply going to click on that to go ahead and take us to that list. So if you haven't created it before, you'll be able to save that immediately. Um, or if you um, reference this often and have this already saved in your portal, then of course, it'll just pop you to your pre-existing list. So you're probably very familiar with the HubSpot definitions here based on um, unengaged, based off the number of email sends, and then basically not interacting uh, with those emails by opening them and different metrics. So we're simply just gonna come to this performance tab here because it's already pre-built for it to track basically your, your list size over time, right? As contacts come in or fall off of those, um, that status. So we're just going to change this date range here to this year. That way we'll be able to capture um, everything starting back from January 1st through now. So we'll go ahead and save exactly this by just clicking on actions, save report. And then of course you can change this name here so that you know that this is unengaged contacts over time. And then simply add that to whatever existing da dashboard um, that you're already using to track things like your CRM health, or you can even just go ahead and create a new one if you don't have one already going for you. So that first one's pretty easy, right? Because HubSpot already has uh, this stuff kind of preset for us based on the list functionality. So the next one I'm gonna be going over is going to be this one here. So being able to do your contact counts by life cycle stage, but then also being able to reference whether or not they are marketing or non-marketing contacts. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into the report builder now. And we are gonna use just a single object report. And then of course, be sure to select contacts from here. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab any properties that we might wanna be able to easily reference when we're in that report. Um, when you click on the little bars, you basically can see uh, more information about who those contacts are. So very similar to how we're looking at this table here, you'll get you know, the contact name, when they were created, life cycle stage, um, if there's other things that might be of importance to you, um, maybe tracking source types or anything like that, you can go ahead and add those different properties here. And then of course, we also wanna know their marketing contact status. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one. Jumping over to the visualization step, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to a column and then drag in our life cycle stage to be displayed. And then of course, we just want the count of contacts for that. So this will go ahead and populate for us and give us all of our different bars based on a life cycle stage. So now the last thing here, we're gonna go ahead and also grab in this marketing contact status and add that to be displayed as well. So now this will just be up to your preference, of course, if you would like for there to be uh, two different bars here, or if you wanna go ahead and get those into one singular. Um, so that would be my preference. I'm gonna go ahead and update our display options here um, and go ahead and change that to a standard stacked uh, view. So now we can actually see those comparisons. And then one last step here, because I do want to know all of our CRM information, I'm going to adjust our filter because this is going to be filtered based on create date uh, as a default looking at this quarter, but we actually want to know data for all time. So all contacts in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and update that as an additional filter. Um, that way I can truly see the full scope of the entire CRM and not just recently created contacts. So from there, just be sure to save and again, add that to your existing or new dashboard. Jumping over into report number three now. So that was two for our contacts. Next one we're gonna cover 
is going to be jumping into looking at our companies. So we're actually going to be looking at companies that don't have any associated contacts. So this will tell us, um, one, if maybe we need to update our settings, if we are not automatically uh, tracking and logging contacts by their domain to go ahead and attach them and associate them correctly to their corresponding company, or if there's just some inputs that are missing, uh, maybe we were scoping out companies and added them in, but we didn't quite have any contacts ready for them just yet. So we'll go ahead and again, use the single object report here. And this time, just be sure to select companies. Then again, we're going to go ahead and add any um, relevant properties that we might want to know, um, of course, about these. So you might want to segment this by whether or not they're a target account. Uh, maybe you do want to know their industry. Maybe you want to grab things like the domain name, um, anything like that, that again, would just be good to look at at a snapshot similar to this um, table that we're seeing here. So we're going to update this visualization. Um, for this one on our dashboard, we're just using the summary to just simply get a number. And then you can click on that number and, of course, again, see the table and the full breakdown of each of those company names. So here we just want to make sure that we, again, are grabbing that count of company. And then if you do want to filter by target accounts, you could bring that in um, as an additional prerequisite as well for displaying that information. Last step I'm going to do is adjust our filters. So we want to make sure that that create date, we want again to look at all time. And then I want to add in that filter here for understanding um, the number of associated contacts. So here we are, number of associated contacts. And we're going to do is a less than, actually, we can just do is unknown. Um, and apply that filter there. So we don't have any contacts associated. Um, so that is going to give us a six here. So you do see that this does say false, um, and that is going to be based on me using that additional criteria for the target account um, being added. So they are not target accounts. If they were, uh, then we would have a number for true. So we just have six here that we can click on uh, to be able to see that information. Back to our dashboard here as so we are chugging along. So again, we've covered two contact reports, one company report, and we're going to end off talking about two uh, deal ones. So the first one we're going to be looking at is our open deals with past or no close dates. So this is great for sales teams and understanding, um, you know, making sure that we're updating when our close dates are um, and making sure that we, we have that right forecasting. So this time we're actually going to be using, um, instead of the single object report builder, we're going to use the custom report builder. So just be sure to change your primary source of data here. We're going to go ahead and go to deals. And then once again, we're just going to use our KPI little summary to just get the number. And so the only thing that I actually need to drag in for the value is the count of deals. And then again, all of the other information is actually going to be used in the filters area. So filters is, is kind of a big key thing. So for these filters, we are going to be looking um, at the close date. So we want to go ahead and grab that field and we are looking for anything that the close date is unknown. And then we're going to drag another one and we're going to do for close date is more than one day ago. And the last step here, I want to make sure that we're only looking at deals that are still open. So, of course, we want to filter out any deals that might be closed because uh, then those closed dates will be correct. So we're going to go ahead and grab deal stage. And we're going to change our filter here to is none of. And we want to filter out anything that is closed one or also closed lost. I'm just going to search here and check off anything that says lost. Had a lot of old pipelines, so quite a few different lost ones that we have to select. Perfect. Now, this is where we need to make the biggest change that most people don't uh, know to come and grab. So we want to change this instead of to do all filters or any, we're actually going to do custom because we want to make sure that we have one or two. But then we also need to make sure that we have number three. So they can either have a close date that is unknown or a close date that is more than a day ago, but they always need to make sure that the deal stage is not closed one or any of our closed lost. And we'll go ahead and hit apply. Yep, so it looks like uh, we've got some cleanup to do on our portal here to update about 20 deals to get those uh, up to date with our closed dates. 
Then last but certainly not least, again, back on our data health dashboard, we've got one last report that we're going to be doing here, and that's going to be our open deals without any activity in the last 30 days. So again, this is a really important one for our sales team to making sure that we're actually active um, with our deals and we're keeping things up to date, adding notes, attempting emails, calls, whatever that might be. So very similarly to that last report, we are also going to build this one with the custom report builder um, versus using the single object report. So again, be sure to just change that primary data source and we're going to go ahead and select deals change our um, metric or chart settings here to the KPI. So we grab that number. And once again, we're going to be using the count of deals. We're going to pop back here to our filters. And this time we are looking for last activity date. So we're going to go ahead and grab that one. And we want to know anything that hasn't had an activity in more than 30 days. And then very similarly to the last one, we also want to filter this by stage because if it hasn't had activity um, and it is a closed deal, that is okay. We only want to know those ones that are open. So once again, we're going to go ahead and change that deal stage to is none of. We're going to filter out all closed one and anything that is closed lost as well. And apply. Perfect. So it looks like our team is doing much better about logging your activities, at least. We've only got about three deals, it looks like, here that need to get uh, some new activities built out. That is it. That wraps up our five essential reports for your CRM uh, and data health. So be sure to let us know if you have questions or if you need help uh, setting something like this up similarly for your portal.